never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst but I said to you that you have seen me and do not believe all that the father gives me will what help me all the father all that the father gives me will what oh we got that come to me again right along with believing in him so in, and here's the thing if you're one who believes in him then you're one who believes him and you're one who comes to him and you're one who receives from him. In other words, there's a continuous relationship and fellowship evolving, amen, developing and growing. That's if you want to walk in life and victory, hallelujah, all the days of your life. So today when we receive communion, what are we doing? We believe him because he said, do this to remember me. I believe him and that's why we're doing because we believe him. Amen. And of course we believe in him. And so we're going to do what? We're going to come to him. And what are we going to do? We're going to receive, hallelujah, him. Although he's in our spirit, we're born of God, but we're just, I tell you, I think there, there's a, an accumulative effect of the anointing of God in your life. When you spend time in the word and you pray, you fellowship and you obey God, not to get your salvation, you already have your salvation, you're saved, that's the reason why you come to him regularly, because you are saved. Are you listening? But there's an accumulative effect over time where the anointing and the presence of God increases more and more and more in your life. And every time we partake of communion, I feel like there's the same kind of a thing. Whoo, oh my goodness. I don't know about you, but I got a witness, man. So work with me. Oh, he says, I'm the bread that came down from then. Jesus said, verse 35, I am the bread of life. He who does what? Comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. Yet the Father gives me, what the Father gives me, all the Father who gives me would, does what? Come on, help me. All the Father, who, he, all, the, all them that God gives me will what? Will come to me. And the one who what? comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Comes to me. Now, I looked up that word, and I just was curious about what uh, Strong said about it. And so, here we go. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Praise the Lord. And uh, the word comes to me. Are you ready? This is amazing. This is explosive. It means to come. No, it's more than that. It's like every and all is in the Bible. Look up the word all, and it's the word what? All. all. Every, <laughs> you know. It's more than that. It means this, to come from one place to another. Mm -mm -mm. It means to appear. To make one's appearance it means to arise and come forth. It means to show yourself, to find a place of influence. Look at this. It means to become established, to become known. Say it, established, established. and to become known. Yeah. Remember what Jesus said? He said, many, many have come to me, Lord, 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 Lord. Did we not do these things? Jesus said, I never knew you. I believe in him. When was the last time you came to him? In other words, when was the last time you appeared to him? When, did you, when was the last time you became known to him? Yeah. Don't under, misunderstand me. We are saved by grace yeah. through faith. Are you listening? Yeah. Yes. This is food for thought, folks. To make yourself known to him where he knows you. 
I, I really would never want to hear those words uttered. I don't even want to hear it uttered for someone else that when they said, didn't we do these things in your name? I believe in Jesus. Hello. And Jesus said, I never knew you. You never came to me. You never made yourself known to me. We, we, we didn't have any fellowship. I, who are you? Who are you? Now, I don't believe that a single person in this place is going to hear those words, depart from me, I never knew you. I don't believe a single person in this house is going to hear those words. I don't. I don't. Praise God. Amen. Come to him. He, that's what our salvation is about. What he has done is he's brought us to the Father. The Bible says when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, this is going to make you happy right now. What he does, you see it over there, I believe it is in Colossians. It says that he will take you and he will present you before the Father without blemish, without spot. And he will say to the Father, the moment you get born again, this is what happens. This is what happens in the spiritual realm. God, Jesus takes you before the Father and he says, he's mine. He's come to me, he believes in me, he believes me, and he has decided or she has decided to surrender their heart and their life to me. And you know, she ta- and they take communion on a regular, I'm just paraphrasing now, folks, hello. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. So when we partake of a communion today, let's remember that that blood is everlasting, He hadn't changed his mind about you. You're not going to lose your salvation. Hello? Don't want anybody to get nervous and walk out and go, I don't know, man. I think you're all fine. But only you know. Everybody knows their own heart. It's getting quiet in here. Look at what he says here. I love this. He said, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me will by no means cast out. Have you come to him? Yes. Have you come to him? Yes. yes. Do you believe him? Yes. Have you decided, you know what, I'm going to believe God over what everybody else says in the world you know, I'm going to take God's position on all these different issues in life and in culture and, you know, what you hear in the news. And, you know, they say this book is old-fashioned and it's out of touch and we're progressive, so we are progressing beyond this. That's what progressives do. It's beyond the traditional values that are established upon the Word of God. No, no, well, we, need to be stay, we need to stay up to date with culture. I don't want to stay up to date with culture. I want to stay up to date with Jesus and the Word every time. Hello, are you with me? Yes. I didn't plan all this. I do want you to know that. I didn't. But I believe he did. Ooh, okay, come on now. We're almost done. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. You believe in him? He says, I am the bread of life. The fathers ate the man in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. Ooh, come on. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. How many of y'all want to eat that bread today? You're going to eat that bread today. Come on now. And he shall live forever. He says, um, And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. And the Jews therefore quarreled among themselves. Jesus knows how to get them stirred up. You know that. And what they say, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Hmm? Look at that. What happens next? Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink, oh, you know, it's interesting. They're already quarreling. He hears it. He knows what they're saying. How can this man tell us that we got to eat his flesh? <laughs> and I can imagine in Jesus' mind, wait until they hear the next part. <laughs> they're all 
upset about himself. He, eat his flesh. He's telling, first of all, he says he's God because he makes himself the son of God, which makes him equal with a God. We need to kill him. He heals and raises this guy from the dead. We need to kill him. And now he's just saying, eat my flesh. We definitely need to kill him. But he's not even done yet. Most surely I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> now there's one thing you eat in the flesh, but now you're going to drink my blood too. He says, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever, look at, come on, work with me. Let's read it together before you go to sleep. One, two, three. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father, so he who feeds, come on, say it with me, feeds on me, will live because of me. Ooh, let me all feed on the Word. Ah, 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 praise the Lord. You come to church and this is a feeding your feet. Listen, church, you qualify. You are feeding on him this morning. I know some of you are kind of going like this, you know. Maybe I'm giving you a little too much. Huh? You know how when you're nursing a baby, and they know how they know when they've had enough, what do they do? They just go, they just turn their head the other way, and that thing slips right out. But you just think they're not, they haven't had enough again, and you push it back in. And they take a deep breath, and, and then, of course, they go, oh, they've had enough. But at least they fed. And I think some of you have already been there right now. Okay. So look at this, but I'm going to feed you a little bit more because I feel like you need a little more. But look at what he says here. Where are we now? All right, he who eats my flesh, verse 56, and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Say, praise the Lord. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. You know they didn't invite him back. Yeah, uh -huh. he ain't getting no invitation back now. Look at what happened here. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Hello, help me, let's go. Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he has be was before? Now listen, he clarifies this is, this is where we'll, we'll wrap it up right here. Look at this. Verse 63, work with me. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless that has been granted to him by my father. How many all glad that the father granted you to come to him? Amen. Yes. And the reason why is because you had it in your heart and you hungered in your heart and you had desire for him and God would not turn you away. He will not turn you down. The father said, come on. Come on. There's a reason why I sent him. Come on. And then he sends, sends evangelists out and preachers and people and, that are born of God to tell the folks the truth and give them an opportunity and some receive and some don't. Aren't you glad you said yes on the day that you got born again? Aren't you glad that what you... Some of you say, this, well, you know, I'm afraid I might lose my salvation. Well, how do you lose what you never won to begin with? Hello? He won it for you. It is him. Amen? Amen. Before we receive communion today, I don't know where everybody stands, where Jesus is concerned, but it's very good for you to be born again and saved before you receive communion. Are you listening? And maybe there may be some here this morning that, you know, in, in, you, in your own heart, because you know your own heart, you've gone astray away from the things of God. 
Well, the Lord is saying, come on back home, son. Like the prodigal son of old, he was waiting and watching for him. And when the prodigal came to his own senses and said, I want to go back to my father's house. And in his mind at the time, it was really so he could just survive and live, you know, because he was living in that pig pen. And you know what? But, but his father didn't care. The main thing was is he came home. No matter what the motive was, he still came back. And he received him. The father received him. Do you understand? God is waiting. He's eager. Hallelujah. And he calls the prodigals. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And uh, those who have never received him or never been born again. So if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life before we receive the communion, then it's important for you to do that. And so how do you do that? The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be what? Saved. Saved. Amen. That means born again, saved, blessed, healed, forgiven, washed, cleansed, once and for, say once and for all. Once and for all. You know, praise the Lord. You hear week after week, month after month, year after year, You are what Jesus was talking about. You are the one that come to him. Aren't you glad? You come to him. Hallelujah. You came came to him today to feed on him. He said it, didn't he say? He who comes to me and feeds on me and feeds on my word. You're feeding on the word today. Glory to God. And you're not saved by that in and of itself. You're saved by just faith and trust in what Jesus did completely and totally. And you had nothing to do with it other than believing. Jesus said, this is the work of God. This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. That's all. That's it. That's, you don't work for your salvation. God did the work for you. All you do is believe. How many of y'all are secure in that? So let's pray this prayer out loud for those here that are with us this morning that do not know Jesus, that are not saved. And for those of you that maybe have gone astray, maybe like the prodigal son of old. And you know what? This prayer will cover it all. Are you with me? For those that are already born again, all this is 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 what, what the Bible says, hold fast to your confession of faith. So for you, all of you that are saved in this place, which are, which is most of you, hallelujah. When you make this proclamation, you're not getting saved all over again. You're just, you're just maintaining your proclamation of faith in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's what he said to do. Amen. So let's say this out loud. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for life eternal that comes through faith in him. And I affirm my faith in Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and my Savior. And I affirm my faith in the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. I believe it. I continue to believe it. I will always believe it. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing me with your blood, forgiving me of all my sin and trespasses, cleansing me from all unrighteousness. I thank you, Lord, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. So everybody got their communion cup and the bread? Ooh, I got mine. Let's peel off that top layer of cellophane. Some of them you need a firecracker to get it off. They're just a little sticky for whatever reason. Amen. Put up on there, if you would, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. Let's read that. Thank you, Father. If you didn't receive a communion elements, put your hand up. All right, there's one over there. Anybody else? What's it say? Come on. 
For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. But do you know, actually, go back to the text over there. I believe it's in Luke. Um, anyway, in the gospel, it says, which is given for you. Amen. So it says, it's given for you. Do this what? In remembrance of me. Next. And when he had given thanks, am I reading that again? Verse 24, go to the next verse if you would, please. Did we go? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, hold the bread up if you would, please. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for the bread. <laughs> All right. So let's do this again. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the bread and what it represents. The body of the Lord Jesus, which was given for me as a sacrifice. And I declare that this is the healing bread of heaven so that by your stripes I am healed. I partake of this bread in remembrance of you. I also remember that this bread represents the body of Christ, the church. Come on. Yes, and I am in union with the rest of the body. And I choose to receive all my brothers and sisters as I would receive you, Lord, whether I agree with them or not. I refuse to judge them. Thank you, Father, for the healing bread of heaven. I declare that something supernatural and amazing is going to take place right now when I partake of the bread and I partake of the cup. Something amazing in my entire being, my spirit, my soul, and my body. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the bread. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as, oft, as often as you drink it in what? We remembrance of him. What do we remember? That the blood washes away your sins, past, present, and future. Come on, once and for all. Right? And later on in the passage, he says, but let a man examine himself, so let him eat. Well, why? You have to go back several verses before when he was correcting the church at Corinth on how the method of which they were partaking of the communion and the method and manner, same manner, the manner of which they partook of it was not a worthy manner. It wasn't an issue of worthiness or righteousness. They were righteous and made worthy by the blood of Jesus, but the manner of which they were partaking of it was not a worthy manner. And so he was saying, you need to make some changes here. Quit getting drunk at the communion service. Are you with me or you just go home? They were. They had a big old potluck, a big old buffet, all this food and all this stuff. And people were stepping out in front of others and they weren't waiting for another, one another. And he said, no, 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 you all got it all wrong. He says, it's just the bread and it's just the cup and that's it. And if you're hungry, he says over there in the message translation, why don't you wait and have a sandwich at home? Then come. Are you with me? And then he goes on in that same passage, and what does he say? He said, for this reason or for this cause, many among you, among you church folks at Corinth, many among you are weak, you are sick, and some of you die young. Among you. So what's the opposite of weak? Help me. What's the opposite of sick? Healed. 
What's the opposite of sleeping or dying young? Long life. And so we partake of it in a worthy manner like we're doing today right now. Then we can make a proclamation of faith and let's do this. Say thank you, Lord, for the cup and what it represents. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The new covenant. And every blessing and every benefit of that new covenant is health and wholeness, prosperity, and longevity of life. So I declare, as I partake of this cup, I remember you, that there's no condemnation in you, that I'm washed and cleansed once and for all. You are the sacrifice forever. And I thank you, Lord for this wonderful covenant. And because of these things, I can proclaim according to this passage that instead of being weak, I'm strong. Instead of being sick, I'm healed. And instead of sleeping and dying young, I partake in a worthy manner And I have long life. I declare that as I partake today in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Let us partake together. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. When I was talking about uh, believing, Jesus said, believe me, believe in me, do all that. Keep in mind, go back to the beginning of what I said in the context of it. You live in a world now, and you're surrounded with people all over, and you hear it on the news, people will make that proclaim. Well, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Hello? But they don't believe him, because if they did, then they wouldn't take the positions that they take that are in total opposition of what the Word of God says. You understand that. That's the context of what I was talking about. So don't walk out of here doubting your salvation. How many of y'all believe and know you're saved? Right? I just want to make sure we're clear. Hallelujah. Amen. At least I know I'm saved. Stand to your feet. Let's make our, <laughs> I know after communion, so we do all these confessions, right? And then we make another confession, all right? But we do, because this is our custom as a church. We make a proclamation of faith, and it's the same proclamation of faith every Sunday, but it's a good one, it's a God one, amen? So let's make our weekly proclamation of faith together. Say, thank you, Lord, for this new covenant that I have in Jesus, a covenant of peace blessing, provision, and protection. And I thank you, God, that you've given me authority as a believer, and you have said that I can have what I say. So I say that as I go from this place in this new covenant, I'm always at the right place at the right time all the time concerning all things and all people for the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Drink from the water right now. It's flowing to you because it's flowing to you and it's flowing to me. It's holy It's a mighty river
flow. 